So with Microlock, we went for a, a system because it's consistent. It, it allows us to follow the same workflow and the same patterns throughout our other two milling machines. Will, great to be back at your fantastic manufacturing facility to review some of the Microlock work holding solutions that you've got on site. But firstly, I want to ask you a question. You seem to be doing things differently to other engineers. You start with a fifth axis, then an horizontal, then you move on to a three axis. Why is this? Well, we, um, we went for a three axis just because we were kind of missing that redundancy um, in our machine shop. We needed the ability to fall back if something breaks, which obviously touch wood. We don't, we don't want crashes, we don't want tools going in the shop, but yeah, it was, it was more uh, another arrow to our quiver. We needed to make sure we had that redundancy. We also invested in a, another lathe, so it allowed us to basically turn apart and then second up finish it on this, uh, uh, this vertical. And it, just, it works, it works really well. Combine that with the microlock system and it, there's very few jobs we can't tackle. So the investment is continuing here at WAF Group. Let's have a look inside um, and have a look at some of the parts that you're currently making. So what were your considerations when purchasing Microlock and, and why did you go for this system? Okay, so with Microlock, we went for a, a system because it's consistent. It, it allows us to follow the same workflow and the same patterns throughout our other two milling machines. Now, this machine itself is kind of a, a catch-all, a, a bit of a, a saviour on the back of the other machining operations. So we can transfer a lot of our programs, although we have to increase the operations and we have to do a few more orientations, we can do most of our work on here if a spindle goes down. Now, the beauty about this machine and also we can just throw jobs on off and on. This is primarily used as stainless. We do a bit of brass as well, but because it's always the same material for a, a prolonged period of time, we can just throw jobs on as and when we need them. So you might look at the bed and you think, well, that doesn't really make sense. There's not really any order to it. Um, it doesn't really need to be. Uh, as long as it's held square and held true, once we've set our offsets, we can just run it. We just have to make sure our clearances are all there. For us, it's just making sure it's time, of time effective for us, making sure that spindle keeps turning and make sure the parts come off correctly. I mean, looking at this particular setup, you're holding, you know, what is it eight components there that are actually set, um, and you're presenting eight components to the spindle. But it looks to me like you could be presenting a hundred components to the spindle with the amount of space that you've got on on, on the bed. Yeah, well, we we can do that. There's um, the, the beauty about the system is we can scale up, we can scale down. You can hold much larger parts or quite small parts. The way that we tackle the work holding with this machine is that it's finding a balance between the setup and also then the attack time. So on quite a short attack time part, we would try to find that sweet spot. So sometimes we'll set up like an op one, op two, op three solution. So we get complete components come off at the end of a cycle. So it's run all three ops instead of doing one massive batch of op one. So let's say one part goes askew or a tolerance falls out then you might lose the entire set of parts, but by doing it in different stages, it allows us to basically tweak where we require. Oh, there's been times where, with the size of the bed, I've had completely different parts, one side, compared to the other side, and it just gives us that extra bit of versatility. And that's a really good point, really. Now, versatility, you know, let's, let's start with versatility, versatility. How does the system work? Explain to our viewers how this system works and how you can maneuver the devices the around the machine bed. Okay, so the microlock system is really simple. It works off like these slots which you have talons in the back of the actual microlock work holding. So that always will line up square. So they're ground square and perpendicular to each other. So you locate like a central fixed jaw and then you work all your solutions around that. So you put down, it's like a like a cross effectively which allows you to locate uh, the spacings of the movable jaw from there you if you're going for a hard it's a very parallel part it's just it's very simple using different step jaw sizes you can get them in all different sizes um, I traditionally use three mil just I don't want to use too much material I know a lot, you see a lot of videos and 
companies using like a full 20 mil but that's a waste of material that's a waste of money that's you're literally scrapping that material and it's ruining your cash so with this it's actually a very secure solid system so on stainless steel I'm still taking fairly decent sized cuts but I'm holding on to to three mil of material and then the beauty about it is you can switch it round drop the full depth when you're whipping the back off and it just works it, it's okay so you can move the vices around anywhere on this machine bed how accurately can do, do, they, do they repeat and and what is the clamping force you're only holding on two or three mils if i'm being perfectly honest with you i don't know the maths um all i know is i have not had a part come out yet um which is always a good testimony <laughs> to it bear in mind our, we always try and we use a lot of trichoidal uh, toolpaths so we're taking fast lighter cuts um, we don't really go for a full slot like a, a full hog slot because that's that's not really what our machines are geared up for it's, it's geared up for those fast lighter cuts um, as for holding force though when we have made a few mistakes because we all do it you might you might have a, a bit of offset wrong and you you end up doing a, a full I know six mil cut on a 12 mil tool when you when we're not trying to do that nothing's ever moved nothing's as for repeatability you can get away with setting the same job up leaving the offsets in the computer and pressing that button we don't run it that way just because we use a lot of in cycle probing so we work to an offset to a location and then the program will run off its what i'd call its sister offset which is the next one down and move back and forth so locate the part with the probing system align it and then run from there but we have had instances where we're just trying to do a quick job where we haven't gone to the lens to program that and I get the repeatability when we put them on the CMM consistently anywhere between 10 to 5 microns as long as you're keeping your eye out for your tool wear um, but again it's it works um, as for like from one side of the bed to the other side I think this so this is a matched pair but when we've actually probed up to the machine I think there's like seven microns from one side to the other where the actual height is is different which is negligible especially when we're looking at what 1.3 meters bed so yeah brilliant brilliant bit of kit so repeatable yes very so now looking at this 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 application again we've established you know you can do lo low volume work high volume work you can present lots of components to the spindle lots of small components to the spindle or one very large component to the spindle if you wished yes now you've mentioned setup time before you know is it saving setup time yes um it's saving setup time in the fact that we can react with this machine. So we, when we, we first try to set up a job, we will obviously always try and look at the best approach to hold it. And, but when you're trying to get that set up after the fact, we have it. So it's because of the grid system, we can CAD it all up. We've got it all modeled up so we know where parts need to go on large production runs. But saving time on a, a small batch, let's say, so for example, on this, we've got you might think a very odd array set of vices, but what's actually happened is because we've got the room, we've just thrown two vices on, quickly probed up the, uh, the part and just press go. It's really that nice and simple. And it gives us that versatility to throw a job on and throw and pull it off very quickly. So you need to slide in a stainless steel part, not a problem. Quickly throw another vice on, clock it. You don't have to clock it up, sorry. You probe it, your work offset, and then we're done. Well, been a great interview thank you very much yes. one final question you've got micro lock on all of your machines milling yes. machines yes is it your preferred choice for work holding yes it is it, it works